Let's have a look at altering modern day postcards to bring about a vintage feel. Hello and welcome to the treasured page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. And today I'm having a look at these fantastic Marianne North journaling cards or postcards which have come from the Kew Garden collection. So these are just a selection of the postcards and here you'll see as the light shines on them in the evening that they are shiny on their surface and whilst they're not too high gloss or too shiny and it's not like a photograph uh, with a shiny photographic gloss finish, uh, they are quite lovely without any alteration. They are a wee bit too shiny for the journal that I'm doing for a Victorian style journal. With that in mind, we're just going to have a look at some other postcards so that you can see what I'm talking about. In my French Linen Botanical Journal, I have added cards that are modern day, but they have a matte finish. Now, this is of the greenhouse, one of the greenhouses at Kew Gardens in London, and it's a matte finish. There's no sheen to it and it's really appealing. If I come over here and have a look at this one, now this is a matte finish but it is a very old postcard and you can see the the aging on there that it is an original one but again no shine to it so it brings about that vintage feel, that, that sort of antique feel of what you expect. So that's lovely. Now on the background here I've used a more modern atlas page which has got a sheen to it. So perhaps if that was muted down this page might work better, it might look nicer. So this is something to think about uh, because we can always come back and we can always alter and change our journals and add to it as we learn new techniques. So that's why journals are often never finished when they're your own personal one. Here's another example of a card that's been sent to me uh, from Japan actually and it is uh, an older card but it's got a texture to it therefore it's interesting and it's a matte finish again and these are the cards that I seem to be drawn to. Um, so everything here is matte and it brings it into that vintage feel and there's another one and this is as you can see it is an old original card. Um, there's no date on there though, but it it just, that lack of gloss shine to it gives it a feel of an older time, an olden, era, an olden era, that's what I'm getting at. And even some of the stickers here perhaps bring a more modern feel, a more 1940s, 50s maybe. So it is that element of the gloss shine that can make your journals feel less authentic so I'm, I'm looking at that I don't mind the glassine bags glassine bag shine is perfect there's something about it I, I love that but I've worked really hard to take the glossy shine out of this journal and I think if those of you who have followed along when I was making the French linen botanical journal that's this one I added vintage sewing paper. I'm not even sure if it was vintage sewing paper. It's just sewing paper, pattern paper, um, that they use to make the patterns, is made of a particular type of paper. It's almost like a tea bag paper. It's some sort of strength to it. And when you glue it down with just a normal wet glue, like a PVA glue, a school glue, um, a wet white glue, it takes away the sheen and adds this fantastic aged quality and a really wonderful texture. So I'm always on a quest for dulling down high gloss when I'm doing a vintage piece. So I think um, I think that's a photograph. So this is a photograph but it's also a postcard. So that's that's sort of acceptable as as a shine because it's a photograph. So you come to expect that, but when it's a picture postcard, you don't necessarily want to have the high gloss. So that's just an, an idea, just a demonstration there. Uh, let's bring this in. 
So this is a Marianne North uh, painting. This was painted in Australia in 1880 and we've got this uh, galah, as I've been told, by subscribers in Australia writing in telling me, oh, it's a galah. <laughs> and um, that, was, that was interesting. So that's the shine on that. Then let's have a look at something from the 90s. For this postcard here, look at that gloss shine on there and the Marion North one you know those are shiny cards but let's have a look at a photograph style card here this is a fun novelty one and that's high shine because it's got a gloss finish on it and this one is an old one and it comes from 1961, so it's an older one. Right, so what would have happened there is there would have been a drop-down map or there would have been more photographs. Uh, and, it, and I'll just show you on here, there's a crackle. Can you see that crackle that appears um, in the glaze that's on the photograph? So we just think, or, or on the... I don't know, the coating, maybe like a plastic coating or something. So in the 60s we can see that that was the case and there's a crackle. So these are, these are things that we look at if we're doing trying to do anything authentic with our crafting. But going back in time, let's look at this one from Scarborough. This is a seaside one and this one is early 1900s. I think it's I think it says 06. So this is 1906, got the old king stamp on there. And you can see that it is a matte fish finish, completely different from what we've got going on here. High shine and low low shine. So that's the era. Yeah, so postcards weren't invented until around 1870 in Austria and we didn't have them. And when we did, we certainly didn't have high gloss shine. They hadn't got to that bit yet. So this is coming back in, 90s, looking like that. And I really want to take away the shine because I'm trying to achieve something like that. OK, so what I, what I want to do is I'm putting into my journal these wonderful postcards but they are coming back rather shiny and I want to achieve something like this to fit in with the era that I'm talking about. So we've got these Royal Botanical Kew Garden postcards and um, this one was painted in West Australia, it's a flame tree or fir tree, that's what I was collaging with the other day, got the shine on it and this is the untreated one, and this is the treated one of some Californian flowers with hummingbirds that I liked so much. This was painted in 1875. Now, there's the difference. This has got a treatment to it that is altered, whereas this one hasn't. So it's come over here, see the light shining. So this is the one with the treatment, this is the one without, and you can see that there is no shine, no glare coming back from this one. And then that one looks very akin to something that you might have seen from the correct era. And therefore, I'm really liking that. And I, obviously, I love that. But I don't want it shining and glaring back at me under this nightlight. So whilst it's a very small detail, it's bothering me <laughs> and I just thought I would show you what I did for my process very very simple so simple but a slight technique to it and I thought we'd have a Marianne North story and rather than making you watch paint dry quite literally I'll just do do the treatment and then we can have a look at some other things as well so I'm also wondering if I could take down the shine on an altered uh, envelope here. This is the window from a scrap envelope. And I'm just looking at past projects here. This one I don't mind because, again, it's that 1960s. And there's one that ha actually has the paper. It's a novelty postcard and all the pictures there of Scotland but it's got this um, quite nice glaze on it which is fun because it's got a nice feel to it and it is a real original vintage so I don't mind that at all. So that's what that um, 
that's what that was all about. So these are quite fun to make and, and copy. All you would do is just cut the postcard and then you can insert something fun. So we'll probably have a go at that. Um, when I'm doing something from the 60s, I'll, I'll do that because I think I've got some crafts coming up alongside that because I've got a whole bunch of letters and I'm fairly sure they're from the 60s. So I thought we could do something like that coming up next month and read some stories there. Not to say this is all coming to an end because it's not, but I just, you know, I like to keep things interesting. So I've also got this calendar page, which has got a sheen to it. And I remember at the time I loved the image, or was it book page? I remember that I love that art, that calming page, but the sheen, it almost wasn't too bad because it was very similar to that. It wasn't too bad. But now I'm thinking, with this treatment of the matte medium I'm going to show you, I could probably work in the other journals and just, just you know, bring it up a notch. And uh, I'd, I'd, I'm pleased with this. So I'm going to have a go at this. See, things like this, where it's a packet, it's obviously a modern packet, but it's beautiful. If I put a treatment to that... I might like that to stay in there. I only put that there as an... I've got to actually use the seeds. I might see if I can grow a Persian silk tree. I've got the seeds from Kew Gardens. I have to remember they're there. Um, you never know. OK, so this one sort of worked, but sort of hasn't. And that was with Mod Podge Matte. So it sort of works. But maybe it, maybe it's my application... So if I find the Matte Mod Podge, which has lost itself at the moment, I shall do a postcard in that, but that won't be happening today, so we'll do it another time. But that is what I'm aiming for. And when I bring this right up close and let you see with the light hitting it, um, there's there's just nothing. There's no, there's no lines. It's as smooth as anything. There's no grit to it. It's just lovely. OK, so all we do is take a little bit like that on the brush and I think I'll go with it long ways and you do not need much at all. So the um, idea here is to cover it with the thinnest of coats. So it really is just a very thin coat that I'm putting on. Okay, so just sweeping it over. And I've got to about halfway and I'm just, just going to use a similar amount for the other half. Just blending that in. Concentrating on the edges. And bringing that down. Okay, fairly straightforward, just painting it on. Nothing too difficult at this point. <laughs> Then bring it down, just make sure we've got that coated, so it's still a bit shiny, but then it's wet. And then it's all about the technique of the brush, so down ever so slightly, only the tip touching it, right? Bring that down, bring it down, all in one direction, just bringing it down. So you'll put the pressure on it to bring it down. You don't sweep back up again. You're just bringing it, dragging it is what we're doing. We're dragging it down as the technique. That's to avoid ripple marks in it. Now there is a moisture in here, so it's going to make the card bend a bit, but that's okay because it, it goes flat when it dries. So just working the product down in one direction. So the pressure goes on and down but we don't sweep it back up again. Right. And then that is pretty good. Then you just check it. I've managed to get a fingerprint in there. So that's probably okay. But what I'm going to do is just take a second coat and it dries. You know, that's touch dry now because it was so thin. Second coat now, the other direction. Exactly the same technique, 
pressure on dragging it down but in the opposite direction so we did it that way and now we're doing it that way and that's it that's what we do get a bit on there to drag down in the first place okay now you can see on there those lines that's what we don't want so we don't want those lines so we are doing two coats okay so we're we're now like that and then turn it round again so now we're going lengthways again and we're going to just smooth it out slow steady and as it dries you'll feel a drag but you'll also feel the ridges smooth out so it's just a te it's really a technique that makes this work and a very very thin coat each time and then when we can see anywhere where there's little ripples just drag the paintbrush over to smooth them out if it's dried too quickly for you you can add a little tiny spritz of water just to reactivate things a bit and then just smooth it out until you've got an absolute clear perfectly smooth surface that you're happy with and there we go one matte finished card looking similar to that and then it sort of dries and it all settles down which is lovely and then all you do is you take your ink and give it a little inked edge and this is would be better if it would dry but we just take away that white edge and bring in that vintage feel and come in a bit on the edges there just to give those aged marks and, and even come down a bit just so that you get a little bit of the grime of the years gone by and I'm just using gathered twigs here, but um, anything brown would do. be lovely if the camera could pick it up, but it does actually look like a painting because it's got a texture to it now, and you wouldn't have achieved that without something like that. But actually, that does look like a little painting now, so I'm going to add that to the journal. I think that would be great. So it's taken them from this glossy shine more back to a little sketch painting that you would have found in the journal, particularly with the inked edge. So I'm going to do that on this one as well. Painting away in this methodical manner allows me to slow down, slow my mind and connect back into the stories of Marianne North. And whilst I'm sweeping the brush over the top of her paintings painted over 140 years ago, I am reminded of that quiet era. And we left Marianne in New Zealand as she was starting to make her plans to leave because she was really cold and feeling um, unwell. Her body was affected with rheumatism and the cold only made the condition much worse. So she decides to go to warmer climates and what she does is she heads towards America. So she books herself onto a ship and she takes herself via Honolulu where she stays briefly and then she goes on to America. But what she does is she retraces old steps and goes back to Brazil. She also does an extensive travel period there within Brazil, but she reconnects back in with old friends, Mr Gordon and his daughter and of course her dog Lopez that she left behind. The book that I'm reading from doesn't document too much of that journey, that leg of the journey, but it is widely known that she made many paintings over in Brazil and she was on pursuit of lots of botanical discoveries.
This is all taking place in 1880 and Marianne is on her way to Brazil and she's in good company with her mice that she has taken from Tasmania. They are opossum mice. Uh, they are very small, tiny marsupials and she has in fact taken a breeding pair. So she's got a male and a female who she's called Mr and Mrs Henry and their daughter. And she then spends the best part of a year over in America and Brazil. And we know today that opossum mice are present in those two regions. So it's possible that Marianne North had something to do with the population of that, as well as American sailors travelling to Tasmania and collecting them for themselves and bringing the mice back. And it's also called Opossum Bay in Tasmania and it's sort of reported that nobody really knows why. Well I think we might have made that discovery as well because it's clearly stated in Marion's diary or her journal that that is what she does and so she's on this voyage so we're going to leave her having a wonderful time back in Brazil where we've already been and journaled about and I'm going to go back to some of her earlier years so that we can just remind ourselves and understand what happens next and why she does it for her latter part of her life. Marianne grew up in Hastings in the south of England and that attracted a number of well-known artists, some of whom were permanent residents to the town and others who spent part of the year there. There was Samuel Pout who lived in Lodgings House for several years and there was William Hunt who spent winters in Hastings for 30 years in a house which overlooked the beach. And these artists were friends of the family and Marianne had a contact with them. And William Hunt used to paint beautiful pencil sketches of boats and fishermen and she longed to take lessons from him but he wouldn't teach her. And that may have been because she was a girl or a woman and he was very busy and consumed with his work but she admired his work nevertheless. And he had a lot of botanical drawings with flowers and fruit featured and he often included fine details such as bugs and beetles. We do see that replicated in Marion North's work later on in her paintings. And then of course there was the remarkable Edward Lear who was born in 1812 to 1888. Now Edward Lear was older than Marianne so they became very good lifelong friends and we've seen her having fun with him on a visit over to Italy where he has his house and um, he is a lot older than her so at that time he's in his 60s, Marianne's in her late 40s and uh, there's there's a I think there's 18 years difference between them so they are friends he's of an older generation of her father's generation and that's what she loves it's like an uncle he's that he's that wonderful funny uncle type that she just connects in with and so I'm going to read to you now from the book about this period of her the early years so Edward Lear studies birds. He's an ornithological draftsman, landscape painter, traveller, musician and the creator of nonsense rhymes. He lodged for a time in the North family's gardener's cottage and he used their big fig tree as his inspiration for painting pictures and he would wander through their French windows at dusk and sit down at the piano and sing Tennyson for hours, composing as he went. He picked out the accompaniments by ear and sometimes he would substitute nonsense words much to Marianne's great amusement. He always managed to make her smile. He gave her great encouragement in her painting and he remained a lifelong friend. The Owl and the Pussycat, probably Lear's best known nonsense rhyme, was actually written for Janet Simmons and that was Marianne's niece. Her sister Catherine had a daughter called Janet and Marianne was very, very fond of her. Lear wrote in letters that their little girl is unwell and all is sad 
and so four days later he visits the family and he produces a poem with a picture for little Janet. And it is, of course, the Owl and the Pussycat poem that I've read in a previous video. But the turning point in Marianne's artistic career came in 1867 when she was just 37 years old. She had her first lessons in oil painting by Robert Dowling who was an Australian artist who spent Christmas with them at Hastings. Up to that time she had always used watercolour but once she had tried oils she developed a passion for it and she described it as a vice like dram drinking. Almost impossible to leave off once it gets possession of oneself. Her last visit with her father to Europe was in 1869. She went to Salz she was staying she stayed near Salzburg in Austria. Mr North became extremely ill and Marianne was advised to bring him home. The end came on the twenty ninth of October. 1869, five days after Marianne's 39th birthday. And her father had a special name for her. He called her Pop. His last words were, Come and give me a kiss, Pop. I'm only going to sleep. He never woke again. And Marianne was left to face a world without her beloved father. For myself, she wrote to a friend, All is gone. I shall leave England as soon as possible. And so she left Hastings Lodge forever and then made a trip to Europe with the family servant Elizabeth. It was not a success. Marianne wanted to be alone and was increasingly irritated by Elizabeth. While Elizabeth, for her part, just wanted to get back home. And when they finally came back home, Marianne was utterly miserable. Her one friend, an idol of her life, had gone. Marianne reflected upon her father. There is no doubt Mr North had a great interest in plants. He and Marianne had visited the Horticultural Society gardens at Cheswick as well as the Botanical Gardens at Kew, just outside of London in Richmond, where their friend Sir William Hooker had shown them the wonderful tropical plants, many of which had been newly introduced to England. And once Marianne recorded that Sir William gave her a hanging bunch of flowers of the Ambisteria nobilis, a beautiful tree from Burma, which he described as the most strikingly superb object that can possibly be imagined, and Marianne thought it was one of the grandest flowers in existence, and it was this plant that had made her long for the tropics. So back in Hastings, before Mr North had passed away, and times were good, he had built three greenhouses, one for temperate plants, one for orchids, and one for vines and cuttings. And Marion and her father would often spend much of their time in the greenhouses where Marion potted off the young seedlings and tended the ailing plants, while her father sat peacefully smoking and reading in the temperate regions. Although she had no formal education in botany, Marianne learnt much about plants from this close association and no doubt read a great deal about the subject at the same time. Marianne and her father became even closer after the marriage of her sister and they went on many expeditions together. Once they even got as far as Turkey, Egypt and Syria but they never managed to reach Marianne's longed trips for the tropics. Anne is devastated after the death of her father and she is now returning back home to England but she becomes utterly miserable when she realises that her one friend and idol of her life, her father, has gone. There was apparently no question of marriage although her niece Margaret Simmons thought that many people must have wished to marry her because it was recorded that Marianne had once asked a suitor to leave the room and then shut the door behind him. Of marriage, Marianne once wrote, 
It is a terrible experiment, for a man especially, as a woman is something like your cat and gets to love the person who feeds her and the house she lives in. But men, they have the brains because they have been educated and they have the romantic idea of companionship in their wife and then they discover that they have no ideas in common. I pity the poor wife too when she finds herself snubbed and a sort of upper servant to be scolded if the pickles are not right, and then she will have to amuse herself by flirting with the most brainless of the croquet badmintons. It was therefore a great relief to all concerned, two years after her father's death, Marion receives an invitation from her American friend to stay with her in the United States and Marianne herself believed that it could be the first steps to carrying out her plan for painting the wonders of the tropics and the trip was indeed the first of her epic journeys to paint the peculiar vegetation of other lands. And it is in 1871 the same year as The Owl and the Pussycat is published, that this becomes a landmark year in Marianne's life, a new life which really did begin for her at the age of 40. So we're now 10 years on and Marianne is approaching the age of 50 and she has been non-stop travelling for 10 years. So this is why she's starting to become weaker in her body and needs to go to the warmer climates. And it's here that we can now start to understand some of the passions and where her influences have come for her botanical interest, for her painting, for her thirst for knowledge to not want to be a brainless housewife to somebody. She had higher aspirations for her life and to inspire others around her to think outside of the box, to learn from her. And we leave the story there because Marianne is going to be travelling back to England and spending a year there putting together her beautiful gallery, making sure that the architecture is just right and opening it up to the public. OK, so that was the story. That's the story so far. And I cannot tell you how brilliant I'm finding the gel matte medium for the purpose of altering the sheen and the shine on certain things in the journal. That is such a game changer for me. So now I think when I get book pages of nice images, perhaps birds, butterflies, flowers, I won't pass them by and start looking for oldie worldy papers. I'm, I might just be able to get by with the modern so we could start looking at modern pages and one slick of a gel medium used for collage anyway it's that's exactly what it's for I've gone over all of these you know we'll be able to and here look here's a pocket we'll be able to um, use a lot more things I think from the modern day so we don't have to keep searching out for all these expensive vintage and antique finds because we have now learnt that so that's really great and that medium as a liquid matte medium could be used but it is said that you shouldn't use that as a top coat um, but there's nothing on the tub here to say that gel couldn't be used uh, to be a, a top coat cover, so like a sealant, like a sealant. So there we go. I'm absolutely thrilled with that. And this is just a really sweet way of altering a postcard and just adding a sheet of writing paper with a little square or rectangle or a circular punch out or something that you've snippeted off, a little snippet of something anyway, which will secure and hold that in place and then writing space there. And it can be that it's lifted up as well. I wanted to keep that because I like to know the dates of uh, what, when the painting was was made so I've kept that free but that could equally be uh, glued down and then you could even create a pocket in there if you wanted but uh, 
that that's another little idea so that's going to live there and the the cards can now be made into anything that you want you could have that as the beginning of a little booklet and uh, multiple possibilities for cards that we like and this was the Marianne North 100 postcard collection box and the postcards that I've been using come from the Marianne North 100 postcard, Royal Botanical Gardens of Kew. That's their collection pack. And I'll leave the link below. And uh, it says £15 here, so if you can get it for under £15, then that's a good buy. And, um, yeah, have a, have a search around for those, but I'll leave the link below so you can see what it is and see if that's available in your country uh, but otherwise those could be any postcards that you can get your hands on and you can do a different theme obviously do whatever you fancy but that's a really nice idea um, it worked really nicely on this cellophane as well so I've now lost that high gloss shine which was really annoying me and I've done it there as well. I've just, I'm so pleased. I will probably go round with a darker ink just to age those now. But um, yeah, there's plenty more that I could be doing but it came out so nice on those playing cards and I just noticed there where I'd got a little bit of glue that hadn't, see that, there's one that has I haven't done. But uh, what I have done is just really really brilliant so there's one I have done and um, yeah it just adds to the feel of the journal so I've got a few more to do but I did sit there for a really long time last night and I and I went through this journal and I just dulled down some of the areas where I just felt that the shine was bothering me like these stickers and just took the shine off them and it's given them an aged feel like they were paper. I always remember in my growing up, stickers were never that high gloss shine, not not really. We often had the paper stickers and I'd, I'd put it on there. I've put it everywhere, it's brilliant. I've done it there. Um, and then these stickers, these um, plastic stickers that we can get, I've missed it up there. So actually that I've got a bit more to do. You can see that that one there all shiny and this one here but over here not so much so I'll need to put another coat on those I think but yeah they turn them into a washi tape so if you have got any gel matte medium you now have another use for it. I also went over the backing page here in this journal so now that's dulled down that modern book page and it just gives, gives it, it an older effect. It sort of just turns it into paper somewhat. Um, so yeah, I'm pleased with it. Really, really great idea. And here I took the shine off of this seed packet as well. So now I prefer that. And I think I've got to sow those seeds. I've just read the back. It, they take three months to germinate, so I need to get on with it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to leave it there with all my journals, just revisiting them, taking away the shine. I absolutely enjoyed that, and I hope you've enjoyed the story as well. And then we'll go and find out a bit more about the gallery, which is really imp which is really lovely if anybody is is wanting to visit that this year. So we'll Marianne takes a year off to uh, create her amazing gallery, that's her legacy, so we're going to hear about that next time and then she goes back off on her travels again. So we'll hear all about that but these are my journals that I am still working, enjoying, just I love to delve in, even though this one I consider this one finished, um, I have just managed to make it all that more special by a new learnt technique and that's what it's all about isn't it learning and developing and uh, tinkering and pottering and generally just slowing down so there we go guys i hope you've created a quiet crafting space for yourself somewhere that you can relax and reflect on all the things going on for you and had some time to get lost in your own projects and thank you very much for joining me and all your wonderful comments and your thumbs up and your likes and your general awesomeness okay so i will be back really soon with the next video when we relax into another craft session i hope you found fun and value here and above everything else guys just slow down and make crafting time for you bye bye now